Hey, I'm sure you're going boys. Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. So nice to see you again today. Uh, I had This video is about a tire changer. I bought myself uh, a tire changer because I had to change the tires on my ATV and I was having problems with that little bead breaker I made. Uh, that homemade bead breaker that I made when I was changing the tires on my uh, estate car. I'll put a link to that video up here if you want to watch that. Uh, anyway, that bead breaker worked good for the little garden tractor tires, but not for the ATV tires. I broke it trying to break the bead. So I ended up getting myself a new tire changer at Princess Auto. So have a look here and uh, see what you think of it. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a crack right there. Come and look, see that? See how that opens up? And right there, and right there, and right there. What's happening is the tires are just getting rotten because they're 12 years old. And here is where they were cracked and I put a, some plugs in there but the plugs weren't holding. Well I think those plugs were holding okay but there's just so many cracks around them. So anyway bottom line is these tires are rotten. They have to come off and uh, this one is the worst but if this one's bad the other three are going to get bad. So I ended up ordering four new tires all right, so here's what I got to replace the tires on the ATV. These are Traction Rover tires. Uh, one of the main reasons I got these was it, the price, of course. But also, I was looking for a tread uh, pattern that was not real aggressive, but aggressive enough for off-trail trail, trail riding, if I ever get in that mood again. So here we have this tread pattern. I thought that would be pretty smooth for just driving on, you know, good trails. But if you get into the meat and potatoes of it, it should dig in pretty good. It's got nice uh, uh, aggressive uh, edges here to the to the tread and then the middle part looks good too. And I found these tires from a company called Revco and it's sourced here in Canada which I was very pleased to see. Revco.ca, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And they have, I'm telling you when I went on that site I couldn't believe it, any number of tires, sizes, shapes and descriptions, tread patterns, you name it. I had it. no problem sourcing these ones. And when I ordered them, uh, I think I ordered them on a Thursday, and the following Tuesday they showed up here at the camp. I was very, very pleased. The other thing was free shipping for orders over $99, and you don't have to buy many tires to get your order up over $99. So uh, I think these were around maybe a hundred and a quarter, a corner is what it's going to average up to. So, and free shipping, and they arrived like in four days. So it's just unbelievable, and Revco, very happy to find them. And Revco also, it's it's a motorsports supply house, and their tagline is, we wrench on them, we modify on them, we work on them, just like you. So they know what we're going through when we're looking for stuff, and man, oh man, they got a good selection. Not only tires, they have tires, tires and wheels, uh, you know, accessories, uh, parts, various parts and pieces for different models of ATV. It's a really, I'm, I'm really happy I found this site, and I'm going to use it again for sure, no two ways about it. So anyway, we're going to try and get these tires on the bike. Got them from Revco.ca. Check the link down below and go look at their website and you'll be impressed too. Okay, this is the tire changer. Uh, I got it at Princess Auto. It's a power fist model. It's good for tires from 4 to 16 and a half inches. So I should be able to change tires on my little garden tractor with this, on the Massey, uh, on the Can-Am, on the snowblowers, uh, on the car even if I have to. So. I may probably only ever use this once uh, in my life, but nevertheless now I have it and it's here if I need to use it or if anybody else around the neighborhood needs tire changes, we can do that. So this is it. We're going to take it out of the box now. I'll put it together and I'll show you when we're ready to get into action. Okay, so here it is on the floor. Just to see if the tire is going to fit now. That'll go here. And put that in the corner of that.
Well, I think I got it broke down. So that's good. With it only half put together, I was able to break the bead. Then they suggest you connect the, uh, or you fasten the changer, say to a concrete floor. Well, in my shop, the shop's not real big to begin with. I didn't have room to mount this because, you know, it needs quite a big area to work around it. Plus, uh, I didn't want to drill holes in my concrete floor. So before I did all that, I thought I'm just going to try it on a pallet. So I took this whole pallet that I had and uh, drilled some holes in it and anchored it down with some uh, leg bolts. So we're just going to see how that works. It might not work because when you're twisting on here to get the tire broke off the bead, this platform may move around on me. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. Also, uh, I made some mods to it right off the get-go. <laughs> This part uh, goes on the top to hold the wheel in place. Then there's this little thing, it's called a spider. And then these, this was the mods I made. This table, the tire goes on here, and then there's a little finger that goes up through one of the uh, bolt, the, the wheel bolt holes to keep the tire from sliding around on that. So I put a piece of rubber, just glued a piece of rubber from an inner tube on this table just so that it wouldn't uh, scratch up the, uh, the rim any, or mark it. And then I also cut another piece so I could put on the top of the rim and I put that on there and put my uh, spider on there. Now, I was having problems before trying to get the tire on because this pin kept flopping around, so hopefully that rubber is going to hold the pin in place so I can get my wheel on there. Ah, look at that. Oh, I've got to love it, eh? I'm going to put this, they call it a spider. I don't know why they call it a spider. I guess all the other S words were used up. And then this goes down on top of it. And this is where we're going to find out if having it on the pallet is going to work. Now this is a bar that also comes with it. This end is for removing the tire. This end is for putting the tire on. There's also a little loop uh, formed in the top of this for tightening this center part post down. They say if you spray this around with a soapy film it'll help. So I've got some uh, Dawn here. Try to lube it up a little. And then they say uh, push the tire down into the valley of the wheel. Well there's not much of a valley on this wheel. Let me pull it from this side. Use my back. Whoa! Well, it is working. So we got it half off. <laughs> so it's kind of working on the pallet. But you can see how if it were anchored to the floor, you could really get a good reef on it. Now we're going to try to get the bottom part unhooked. I don't have any lube on it, I just thought, on this side. Bye, George. You know what they say in the old country, there's nothing to it. Well, I went and took a break there before I started to put the tire back on, so... <laughs> Man, this is hard. Tired for no fella. So I'm going to clean this bead up a little bit with some, just some memory paper. Alright, now we're going to uh, mount our tire. So this is the traction rover tire that I bought. And also, uh, I went to work and made up some uh, water and dish soap to make a nice soapy compound. So I'm going to just wet down the beads 
just hopefully it'll slip on a little better. And the rim as well. So we're going to try and mount this now. So uh, the side wall here with the white tag on it, I'm going to put that to the inside. Sometimes they say you can just force these on by pushing them. Hey, and you can, look at that, so that went on pretty good. When I was online looking about these changers, I found a lot of guys, this head here on the, uh, I think it's called a bird's head or something, not really sure. But guys come up with uh, different modifications for them. Well, I don't have a modification yet, so it looks like this part hooks under the rim. This part goes under the bead of the tire and forces it down under the rim, so we're going to try that. They say the problem with them is, as you're doing it, because this is a shaft and this is a, a piece of pipe, it'll roll on that and then this part will slip out of the, the, the rim. Anyways, we'll see how we make out. Oh, one other thing too. I'm not sure if I'm going to need this or not, but I did see where they say when you start to put the tire on the rim, the first part you put under the rim might pop back up again. So what they suggest you do is take uh, something to protect the wheel and a set of vice grips and just uh, put that around the wheel and clamp the vice grips on here. And this is just a piece of rubber tubing just to protect the rim. So now that should keep that from popping back up as I wrap the uh, tire back into the rim. So let's go see how we work out. When I was taking the tires off, you noticed uh, my platform moved around a little bit. But, uh, it was workable. So this bar keeps popping right out of the rim. That's not working too good. Just a second now. I've got another plan here. When I was doing my tractor tires, I bought these tire changing spoons or tire changing irons. I'm going to try these and see if they work for me. And we'll see. So far, the vice grips are doing the job. I thought I was going to lose it there, but I didn't. No, it's not on yet, though. <laughs> uh, there we go. We got air. Alright, so, uh, it's not a bad idea to have tire irons, too, right? <laughs> now, can we get this uh, blowing up? Because we have to get her down on the bead. Get it to hold air. It's good to have one of these inflators that lock onto the to the tire that you don't need to have a stem in for it to work. All right, that ain't working too good. So another plan ratchet strap. We'll put a ratchet strap around the tire. Let's see how that 
Oh, I think we got it. Why, George? Not quite. up on the beads. So there's about 20 pounds in that and it clicked on good. I think it's on the bead all the way around so we're going to put the uh, stem back in it. Alrighty. And then we want to have about 7 pounds in these. Ooh, too much. <laughs> oh, there you go. Can't get any closer than perfect. So yeah, we got the tire change. How about that? My little, oops, my little modification here worked not too bad. Bead is on good on the front. It looks pretty good on the back as well. Okay, so we have the tires back on. One thing I forgot to mention, I had to take the hubs out here to get them on my tire changer, but they're just a little plastic cap that plugs in. So now we'll put this back on the bike. Okay. Now, uh, I was looking in the manual and the tension or the torque for wheel nuts is 74 foot-pounds so I have my torque wrench if you can see that it's set to 74 foot-pounds so we'll just torque these up all right then There's one. there we go all right we're done that's one three more to go well, not a bad tire changer, eh? Like, I'd give that 8 out of 10, that tire changer. The only thing I didn't like about it was the bar for putting the tire back on, that duck head, whatever they call it at the end, that wasn't worth a darn. It wouldn't stay in the rim. I don't know whether it's my rims or what, or the way I was using it, but that wasn't worth it. But you see on, uh, on different YouTube videos reviewing these tire changers, they get a, a more complex duck head, duck bill, or whatever they call them, goes on the end of there. Uh, that might be worthwhile getting. If I were to use it a lot, maybe I'd do that, but I got the tire on okay with my tire iron, so I don't know that I'll go down that road just yet. But anyway, I have that tire changer for 120 bucks from Prince's Auto. You can't go wrong. And also, those tires. Those tires, they're traction Rover tires. Now, I'm not sure if those tires are any good or not. It's the first time I ever had traction model or style or manufacturer tires. But they sure look good. The price was decent. Plus, Revco, R-E-V-C-O dot C-A. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. But Revco.ca in Canada, free shipping for orders over $100. And you don't have to buy much these days to get over $100. So that's terrific. And they had so many tires to pick from. And they were all in stock. Every time you click in one, it says in stock, in stock, in stock. So absolutely great. Go there, check them out. And they sell way more than tires, like I was saying. Lots of other accessories for your outdoor fun machines. Like ATVs, canoes, motorcycles, you name it. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. Sure hope you enjoyed this video. I finally got the tires changed, so there's another job off the list. Uh, no more flats on my ATV. So now I think I'm cleared to get out and start cleaning up the mess from Fiona. And no, I think I can come up with something else before I have to go do that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Hey, wheel doctors.